Hey everyone, today I'm talking about Barrage, which is a 2019 release board game designed by Tommaso Battista and Simone Luciani. This one was published by Cranio Creations and it accommodates one to four players. It takes about two hours to play, maybe a bit more than that if you're playing with more than two players. So the idea of the game is quite interesting. So we're supposed to be these, I suppose, energy tycoons trying to harness power from water. And um, we're going to spend the game building dams and conduits and power stations, trying to get as much power as we can and um, ultimately get as many points as we can. So this game came out with a bit of controversy due to the Kickstarter campaign for this game, um, due to some rather unstand or substandard components. But I'm going to be reviewing this version of the game, which is the kind of the retail version in its own right. So I won't be talking about any of those issues or any of those components. So... Um, so ultimately this is a worker placement game where you've got all these different spots that you can do and um, activate different abilities but I do think the game really lies with the worker placement aspect of the game. It's really to do with the main board itself and how everything interacts with each other because as you can see you've got all these different pools um, flowing down the mountain so you've got the kind of uh, pools where the, where the rain initially comes and it flows down the mountains getting caught in dams and um, ultimately converted into power. So everybody is going to have their own little player board here that looks like this, which stores your, da um, your dams, it stores your little extensions for your dams to capture more water. It will store your conduits here, but as you can see, these have all been used, and your power stations. You've also got a little board here which stores all your resources, and, um, and a little resource wheel here, which is quite a nifty mechanism, which I'll talk about shortly. So as I said, you're trying to get as much energy points as you can in order to get points based on this track here. So the more power you generate from round to round, you're gonna fly up this track and ultimately get money and get these different bonuses which you can get points for. And there's also an end game scoring criteria here which um, again, can get you a lot more points. But let's talk about how the game actually works on the board because this is a very interactive game a lot of cutting off um, other people, a lot of, um, a bit of nastiness, you know, you've got, to, you've got to be a bit savvy and constantly be one step ahead of your opponent. So, as I mentioned, the water is going to flow down, or every, from round to round, the water is going to flow down these, um, down these pools and get caught in these dams here. So, for example, this dam here, which is a neutral dam because it's not of a player piece, is ready to be harvested. And in order to harvest this water and turn it into energy, you need to have three components. So, you need to have the dam itself, a conduit, which is this one here, and that can be of any player's colour, and ultimately a power station, which are these ones here, like this. And once you have all three of those, you can choose to convert that water into energy based on the value here. So if I wanted to convert this one into energy, it would ultimately get put through this conduit here and spat out with this pet energy station to get me four energy per raindrop that's gone through it. Now, the interesting thing here is that it doesn't have to be your conduit that you use. So, for example, here, uh, let's have a look. Let's say, let's say, let's use this for an example. So, if I, if I am used this, if I had water here in this dam, and I, let's say I didn't have this conduit here, then I could still use my opponent's conduit, if, if this was my energy station, and um, end up paying my opponent one point for each or my opponent would get one point for each raindrop that's gone through the conduit and also one coin for each money that's gone through the um, gone through the conduit. So it's a bit of an interactive game where you know you can really capitalize on other players um, other players' dams and stuff. So not only focusing on your own game is important, you've really got to be aware of how to capitalize on other players' games as well. Another thing as well, the, the size of the dams is very important because here, let's say, let's say the water flowed here. Because this dam is only one high, it means that it can only actually store one water in this pool. And if there's another rain flow over it, then it would actually go over that one and get caught in the next dam, meaning that this one can only hold two water and so on. So as you know, building dams higher is important because you can store more and more water, but doing so is going to uh, cost a lot more resources and take time. Because the way you build things is based on this really nifty, um, uh, mechanism where you spend your resources but when you spend your resources they're not actually gone from the game so let's say let's say I wanted to build a dam here so this would be my dam action 
And basically this means that I can build a dam if it's in the mountains, which is the top part of the board, it'll cost me five of these workers. If it's a, in the hills, which is the middle section, it'll cost me four. And if it's on the plains, it'll cost me three. And then what I would do is I would take those resources. So let's say I wanted to build it in the plains by spending three of these little guys. I would put those on my resource wheel here, like this. Um, that would be the wrong one. So let's, let's use the correct one here, like this. And then I would rotate this wheel, meaning that these resources are tied up until it comes all the way back round and is spat out the other end. So when, whenever you buy anything, uh, you don't actually get rid of the resources back into the pool. You actually just tie them up for a portion of time. And one of the actions on the board here is to spend workers in order to make that wheel rotate faster. So, you know, you can spend one worker to make it rotate one, or you can spend, um, you know, two to make it and a bit of money to go twice, or two and a bit of more money in order to make it spend three times. So the, you know, the more you use this action, the workshop action, you can actually get your resources back quicker and build quicker. And as you can see, when you do build stuff, not only does stuff become more expensive based on higher, how high it is up the hill, because obviously the, the rain is gonna get caught higher up the hill if you do build it higher up the hill, but some things such as the conduits, they cost you more resources based on the uh, efficiency of the conduit um, actual line it's on. So say for example, this one here is a strength of three, that would cost me two times three. Um, whereas the cheaper ones, you know, the, the really rubbish ones down here, uh, let's have a look at this one here, would only get me two times one. So it'll be cheaper to build there, but the energy conversion is a lot worse. And additionally, when you build stuff, you start to unlock other abilities as well, which trigger at the beginning of each round. So when you, for example, when I built this dam here, you get three points, but also at the beginning of each round, you get an additional three points. Okay, this one here lets you get more machinery. This one there just gets you seven points. This one here, uh, you know, gives you money and, you know, more money gets you more energy and so on. And additionally, every single player board, like, like these ones, have a, a unique power on them as well, which are quite interesting. When you build your fourth conduit, you get an additional power. So for example, this one, um, when he, oh, sorry, I'm wrong one. I'm thinking about the power stations. When you build your um, third power station, you get a, a unique player action, depending on the player board. So this one, for example, when you, when you do the, um, when you produce uh, energy, you get to do it again from another power station. Uh, all these different player boards as well on the side, which hold your resources, have a unique power on as well, which are quite nifty. And that's basically gonna be how the game flows. So let's talk about some of the actual worker placement um, spots here. So the top bit here is where you are going to actually choose to harness that water into energy. And as you can see, there's some different values here that give you bonus points. So if you take one of these spots, which are, I suppose, the more lucrative spots, you're going to get a bonus to energy, which is obviously going to make you climb up this track a lot quicker and hopefully give you those bonuses. You've got the, depending on the player count, you've got the plus one one, you've got the one that gives you no bonuses, and you've even got ones that give you negative effects as well. But sometimes it's more than worth doing it because the conversions can be very good. You've also got the water management spots here, and these ones basically let you add raindrops to the top of the mountains or let you add a single raindrop and let you make that water flow instantly, getting caught in the relevant dam. And something I should mention as well is that just because these spots are taken, these spots are still usable, but they come with a cost. So getting somewhere is really important to go there for a more efficient cost. But if you really need that action, you can still go there, but it's gonna cost you a bit more money. There's a bank which simply lets you convert um, your workers into, uh, into money. You've got the Workshop, as I mentioned, which lets you spin your wheel. You've got the machinery shop, which lets you buy new machinery for your for your resource wheel. And you've got the contract office. And these contract office is where you're gonna get a lot of your points. So you've got three different kind of tiers of contracts. You've got your easier ones, the more med medium ones, and the more difficult ones. And basically what this means is that you need to generate that much energy in order to get the rewards here. So for example, in this two contract, if you generate two energy in one turn, then you get five money or two energy, three money and two raindrops where you want to put them and so on. There's also one kind of public contract here where it's particularly difficult to achieve, but if you do, you get a rather big bonus. 
To build things, you've got your own player board here. So to build the first thing, it's gonna cost you one worker, then two workers, then three workers, and then three workers and a bit of money. But at the same time, you've got to be um, wary of the fact that you've only got a certain amount of these things you can actually build. So you can only have one of each and you've got a wild card as well if you are not playing the advanced game. And that's going to be basically how the game's going to flow. It's going to be over five rounds. Um, as, as I said, trying to generate as much energy as you can because whoever generates the most money each turn is going to get um, an additional six points. Who's ever, whoever's in second place is going to get two points. And... Uh, if you if you reach the threshold of these certain um, points values for each round, so for example in the, in the third round, if I get to this point here, then I'm going to get five points for each extension of my dams. But for every kind of threshold that you're behind, then you're going to suffer a minus four pair penalty um, to that score. So you know getting up that track is really important, uh, not only for getting money but also for getting those points as well. But something that's important as well is that if you aren't the player who generates the most energy, then you are going to become the first player in the next round. And that's going to be how you're going to play Barrage. So let's talk about what I actually think about the game and how it works. So first off, I really was expecting this game to be very heavy in terms of the rules, um, but I was very pleasantly surprised. This is not a difficult game to learn, but it is a very heavy game in terms of its decisions constantly reacting to what other players are doing, trying to cut them off, trying to get the most value out of your dams, trying to get the best conversion rates. So yeah, all the all the weight of the game lies in the gameplay itself, which I think is absolutely amazing. There is really is no faff to this game whatsoever. The rules are very intuitive and basically it's, it's streamlined to a very good degree um, considering how involved the game is. I love the way the, the networks and stuff are built on this game board. It is really fantastic because you can, as I said, completely capitalize on the state of the board and divert water to where your stations are. You can put conduits and other players' dams to get loads of money that way and so on. So there is really uh, a lot to think about here and it's a, constantly, a constant game of one-upmanship with your opponents. You, know, you can go for the really cheap... Um, cheap spaces down here in order to get you know cheap cheap real estate and cheap power stations but you're going to be getting the dregs of the water that aren't captured higher up the um, higher up the mountain range and additionally you can actually divert water back onto your tracks by using the correct power stations so let's take this one for example so say this dam here um, you know if I had a power station down here or, or here then I can actually just divert this water and spit it straight back out into my another another dam here. So absolutely great the, the way the game works. Um, I think thematically it's just so good in terms of the way everything flows. And I said it's just logical. I just like the way that everything makes sense in this game. There is no side rules. There are no real exceptions to the rules or anything that doesn't come naturally to the player. So I, I really can't fault it in that respect whatsoever. I think it's a a great rule set for such an involved game where normally you know you're going to be sat there explaining this game for or, or game of this kind of weight for a long time but this one is so so easy to portray to other players Meaning, meaningful decisions is just well it is what this game is all about there is nothing in this game that isn't meaningful you can try and kind of be a bit proactive and try to get some of these more lucrative spots early in the game, but then people can just divert the water around you and try, so it, as I said, it's a really is a game of constantly reacting to other players. But yeah, as I said, you've got so many decisions to make. You've got to worry about generating the, the energy in order to get these bonuses. You've got to worry about the bonuses themselves in order to get the points. You want to get the upgrades on your player boards so you can get all these different um, incomes and so on. You want to keep getting more machinery so you can build more. You've got to make sure your wheels are spinning so that you get your resources back in an efficient time. You want to make sure you've got a decent amount of contracts so you're getting the rewards when you do generate that energy. So that really is so, so much to think about. And additionally, there is another player board, which I've not talked about, um, where you can actually get these other upgraded um, kind of resource tiles, which give you little upgrades as well. Also, in, on top of that, You've got to be make sure, making sure that you are making benefit of your power because you know, everybody's got their own unique power. So this one, for example, I can spend these um, resources 
in order to build my conduits, but at a much better conversion weight, uh, conversion rate. So that's a one to one ratio where normally it's a, it's a two to one ratio. And again, using your player powers to ben benefit as well. So there is so much to think about and at all times you are gonna be engaged and thinking about what you're going to do next while still considering what your opponent's doing because they can really do, they really can throw you under the bus and start diverting all your you know, very valuable water away from you. The balance of the game, I think, is, is really good. I mean, I've not fully explored all the player boards, but they seem to add up okay. Um, you know, all the contracts are proportionate. The kind of the, the value of the different worker spots seems put spot on, really. And I like the fact that whoever's kind of generating the least money from round to round is going to be the first player next round, which is, again, very important. And as I said, most of, most of the balance and stuff lies in the game itself. So there's not really any scope for somebody just getting lucky with anything. It's not really a game of luck whatsoever. You can very meticulously plan how the game is going to play out. Um, mechanically, absolutely fantastic. I said not only because of the simple rules overhead, but just this board just works magnificently. I, ca I cannot stress enough about how well designed this game board is and how it all flows and just the, the pure variability that you can have and different diversions you can have depending on the situation. Time investment, the game takes, as I said, about two hours for a two player game. Um, and it's gonna take a bit more than that, you know, when you get into that three or four player count. But I must say that in that, in that time period, there is no scope to lose interest. I mean, we, we, we played a game of this yesterday, took a couple of hours and it felt nowhere near that. It's just so engaging and I think the time is more than proportionate for the amount of game that you're getting here. Um, uptime as well is, yeah, there's a little scope for analysis paralysis, but you're still gonna be thinking about what you're going to do next and gonna be kind of handing or hanging on the edge of your seat in terms of turn angst if somebody wants to grab one of these worker placement spots that you want, because as I said, they are very lucrative, especially this um, turbine station at the end of the game. You know, you want to constantly be generating energy and there just simply aren't that many spots to do it. So, you know, it, that, that turn angst of a worker placement game is really there, which is what you need. And replayability, again, excellent, because you are really playing your opponent. You can get better at this game than while you play it. Um, try different strategies and different approaches. You've got different setups in terms of the awards here, and you've also got different setups in terms of the player boards themselves. So you've got a number of these, I think the four different of these player boards come with a base game and more than that of these. So you've got quite a few of these and of course they combine in different ways as well. So you've got a lot of variability there. And of course you've got different um, contracts that are gonna come up and, and so on. So a good amount of replayability here and I can't see it getting boring anytime soon. Um, interaction is what this game is all about. This is probably one of the most interactive Euro games I've ever played in my life. Absolutely compelling interaction. You cannot ignore what your opponents are doing and just let them have a free ride. You've got to be a bit of a dick and try to um, start diverting their energy and start making, or putting conduits down on their, on their dam so that you can get something out of their little engine. And as I said, constantly cutting people up by building further and further up the hill, um, but paying the resources to do so. So in terms of interaction, it really does not get better than this game. It is the, the most interactive Euro games that I've ever, ever played. Um, Aesthetically, I really do like the way the game looks. I think it has a, a good a good look to it. It's got that real kind of industrious um, vibe and colour scheme. And I think it looks great. I, I really do. Uh, the character artwork itself in, in particular looks amazing. I mean, you know, the detail on these on these illustrations is fantastic. But in terms of the components, I'm in I'm in two minds about how it works. So I, I like the player boards, you know, these are these are recessed, they work really well and they're of a you know a reasonable quality. The board itself is something that I would have liked to seen it being a bit thicker cardboard. It's quite thin, and these player boards themselves as well are, are quite thin, but which I'm quite surprised at because this game really does give the vibe of a game that's built to be deluxe, and it's it's really not actually, which is quite surprising. Um, in particular, these resource wheels. Um, not to go, you know, into old ground, but these ones, um, they could be better. They are a bit flimsy. They're a bit cheap feeling, but you know, if you if you're gentle enough with them, they do actually work okay and come back round all right. Um, but as I said they they I don't know. They just don't quite sit right. It would have been nice to be a bit more robust, but 
they're fine. I, I think the Kickstarter ones were probably probably worse than the one I've got here. Um, I would say that some of these little pieces are too small. Uh, these are absolutely minute, as you can probably see, um, and again, very fiddly. So uh, that's something. Just you know, just a small complaint there. And they come in different sizes as well, um, depending on how many they stand for. But not too much of an issue. These are all really nice. Um, I said the actual um, player pieces themselves, you know, the conduits and the power stations, they work really well. Um, and the money as well is, is a bit flimsy and cheap. It just isn't of a good, robust quality. But hey, you know, it's, it's a small complaint because if I'm talking about the gameplay itself, I mean, you know, that completely transcends the component quality. You know, the theme is just so fresh and, um, you know, unique. I can't think of anything um, quite like this, but, you know, I don't know anything about, you know, um, how water is generated into power, but I imagine it's not far off how this works. So I think thematically it just works extremely well. Um, the setup and teardown time is okay. I mean, you've got your own little player boards you've got to set up, you've got to set up the contracts board and so on, but it's more than proportionate. And the progression of the game is something that I really can speak highly of because, as I said, the board is being built as you play, constantly getting more choke points, constantly building higher and higher up the mountain. And yeah, it really does progress. And the puzzle of mapping things out to your favour is um, a real engaging piece of the game. Um, scalability is, I will say, this game is going to play a lot better at that three and four player mark. However, it works perfectly fine at two. Yes, the game is gonna be a bit more open, um, like it is here. You see there's quite a few empty spots. Um, but in a two-player game, it does have its advantages because the, uh, the game does play a lot quicker. So, you know, you've got that to work in your favor. But I think really to get the most out of this game is going to be um, uh, three or four players, just for that added interaction and added um, kind of cutthroat nature of it. And comparisons, no, there's, there's nothing quite like this board and how it works. Uh, of course, you've got your worker placement games. There are so many. And, you know, this one, that worker placement mechanism works, you know, similarly to, to most of them. But I, as I said, I do like these kind of backup spots where you can go to that cost you more money. Um, but I think if you like these economic Euro style games, you know, maybe your power grids or something like that, then do not give this one a miss. You, you are going to love it. I guarantee it. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my gist on Barrage and all the different elements. So overall, I think this game is phenomenal. It is magnificent. I've heard so many good things about it. And people have recommended it to me for years. I've um, been unable to get my hands on it for numerous reasons, being not available in the UK. Um, but now I've played it and considering the hype was so high, this one has actually exceeded my expectations, which is a, quite a rare feat and just shows how good of a design this one is. Um, well, so more importantly, I was so surprised about how easy it is to play while still having deep and complex decisions throughout. This is just right up there with one of the best games I've ever played. Absolutely incredible. You know, Luciani is one of the best and most prolific designers in the kind of Euro game genre for reasons like this. It is just absolutely magnificently put together, intuitive, um, great player boards, you know, good upgrades, a great sense of progression. The resource wheel is just great and innovative and you've got, you know, another decision you have to weigh up. Just so many decisions, so many strategies, and just more importantly, the player interaction is, yes, it's cutthroat, yes, it's nasty, but it is so entertaining and just brilliantly executed. So that is Barrage, um, definitely gets my elite shield. That is the best of the best for me. Um, because yeah, this is one of the best games I've played in a long time. So that concludes my thoughts on Barrage. Definitely check this one out if you can get your hands on it. If you have enjoyed the review, please hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my um, Instagram and Patreon page. Uh, for everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.